Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Policy Case Competition Memo Writing Workshop. Um, we're coming to you live from Zoom. My name is Ajay Iyer. I'm the director of the 2020 competition, and I'm a senior at NYU studying economics and politics. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Miriam. I'm one of the deputy directors of the Policy Case Competition. Um, I'm a junior at NYU studying public policy. And I'm Izzy. I'm the other deputy director. I'm a sophomore at NYU, and I'm also studying public policy. Uh, so these are the 2020 policy competition topics. Uh, these should be a review for everyone. Um, and our topics are domestic, international, our categories are domestic, international, NYC, technology, and spotlight cities, Mumbai. Each category has four topics. Uh, I won't name all of them, but um, if you don't have your topic assigned to you, uh, let us know ASAP and we'll get that sorted out. So what is a policy memo? Um, it is a practical and professionally written document. It should be around two pages, um, not including citations. What you're doing is you're giving an analysis and or a recommendation to a predetermined audience regarding a specific topic, which is um, your assigned topic. Um, it should reflect attention to the research problem, should be well organized and structured in a clear and concise style. And this is really important. You're assuming that your reader possesses little knowledge of the topic or they just don't have the time to go in and research. So you're doing that for them. There is no thesis statement or overall theoretical framework and the focus is describing one or more policy specific, um, specific policy recommendations and supporting action items. So just a little bit about the style and format. You should be using professional language and font. It should be clear and direct. Um, avoid colloquial language like jargons, cliches, and sarcasm. All of those things are not allowed. Make sure that you are clear and simple. Um, in terms of formatting, one inch margins, single space, um, and then a double space between the paragraphs. Refrain from using par um, bullet points unless they're absolutely necessary. And this next point is extremely, extremely important. Cite your sources. Any memo that does not cite their sources will be automatically disqualified. So please make sure that you and your team members are doing that. Um, and avoid orphans and widows. So an example of a sentence doing that would be, when writing a policy memo, you want to avoid leaving widows and orphans in your sentences. Um, and just to note, the sentences, like literally the word sentences there is the widow and orphan. That just takes up space and you need to, you know, preserve as much space as possible in your two page policy memo. Um, and then just this is an example of what the top of your policy memo might look like. So it's addressed to Andy Hamilton, the president of NYU, and also John Doe, the assistant vice president of student affairs. Um, so from, please make sure that you're not writing the names of your teams and the empty members. In the past, you've allowed teams to do this, but um, in order to make sure that we are avoiding bias and making this competition as fair as possible, we ask that you just write your team number. Um, and then the, the date and um, it is whatever your, your topic is for the last part. So who is your audience? You have to know who the stakeholders are, which are the groups or individuals that can potentially be impacted by your policy. And also who could potentially implement this policy. So for example, if you're writing to, if your topic is in Mumbai, you have to direct it to someone who is in government in Mumbai. If you're doing domestic, you can address it to the United States um, president, et cetera. Um, and that would be who you're, who you're sending this policy to. Know your audience. What do they need? What are their expectations? What's, what will incentivize them to adopt your policy? And importantly, this was stated before, but be clear and concise because these policy memos are meant to be skimmed and read quickly. And you wanna have transparency, like providing specific criteria to assess either the successes or failures of your policies. And the more straightforward you are, the stronger you, your argument will be. Same thing with being clear and concise. Just make sure that it's easy to read. And then for content, it helps to break your memo into sections. So you would start by framing the problem and then go into your analysis of the problem, your solution, as well as the costs and benefits of your solution. Do not downplay the costs, which is good to know because they're just as important as the benefits. And extremely important is feasibility. Um, you'll see this in the grading. This is extremely important, but feasibility in financial terms and political terms. Also know who is impacted and the limits your policy has 
and using headings keeps um, your policy memo organized. So these are just two examples we put up here of different memos. You could find more on the website. There's a bunch from different years, but these just show how you um, formatting, addressing it, titling the different sections, et cetera. Um, so here's a quick overview of the rubric. Uh, so generally format is 8%, style is 12%, creativity is 30%, content is 50%. So for format, we want to see correct citations, correct length, headers, style. We want to see, um, you know, no grammatical errors, uh, great, good mechanics, uh, consistent tone that is formal, and a well-organized document. Um, I'd like to note that if two or more of the sections in format receive a grade of zero, the entire format, 8%, will be turned into a zero. Um, and the next thing is uh, creativity. So creativity is around 30% of your total grade. And the big parts of that are innovation and, pers and persuasiveness. Uh, we want to make sure that your policy proposals are creative and that they actually have enough supporting evidence to be persuasive. Next, we have content. Uh, this is like the uh, elephant in the room. It's 50% of your grade. And the big thing within that is feasibility. So you need to make sure that your proposal is feasible and it's able to be done. Uh, we don't penalize people for having, you know, relatively small solutions. Uh, it's, it's really important that these are actionable proposals. Um, you should also be framing your problem correctly and addressing counter arguments uh, in this. Uh, there's more detailed information available at uh, nypcc.org in uh, the round one information section. Uh, you know, there's going to be uh, the guidelines, which are very important, are posted there, as well as the rubric with uh, all of the grading criteria. Uh, so yeah, make sure you look at that, and if there are any questions that you can answer through that, just you know, feel free to email us at policy.case@gmail.com. Uh, we're also available on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger Pigeon. Uh, so I think we're just, uh, you know, we're going to try and make this competition work as best as we can in the situation that we're in. Um, and we hope that you guys will, uh, you know, enjoy getting the time to the opportunity to research these cool topics. Uh, I mean, thank you for paying attention. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. And, um, we really look forward to uh, seeing your policy memos on April 11th. Uh, the form for submission is going to be sent out in the email as well. So uh, make sure you see that. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.